Ever wonder how something as small as a grenade can flip the odds of a battle in just a few seconds? It's compact, it's terrifying, it's one of the most misunderstood tools of modern warfare. From blockbuster movies to real-life conflicts, grenades have become a symbol of sudden, explosive power. But how do they actually work? And what's hiding beneath that rugged metal shell? Today, on Origin Stories, we're breaking down the fascinating mechanics, history and variations of this battlefield game changer from the moment the pin is pulled to the thunderous detonation. Let's start with the true classic, the Fragmentation Grenade. A weapon designed for maximum area of effect and a staple in arsenals across the globe. You've definitely seen it before, maybe in old war footage from conflicts past, showcasing its historical significance. Or perhaps in modern video games, a staple of the genre, where it remains a popular choice. It's the iconic pineapple-style grenade famously used in World War II, and it remained in service for quite a while beyond that era, proving its effectiveness and enduring design. But here's what most people don't realize about this seemingly simple device. The primary purpose of a fragmentation grenade isn't just to explode with a loud bang, it's to turn itself into a rapidly expanding cloud of razor-sharp shrapnel designed to inflict maximum damage. Inside the grenade you'll find a high-powered explosive core, often made from Composition B, which is a potent blend of TNT and RDX, ensuring a powerful initial blast. Wrapped tightly around that explosive core, either a pre-notched steel shell carefully designed to break apart into predictable fragments or a tightly wound wire coil. When the grenade detonates, this casing bursts into hundreds of deadly fragments. It's not just the boom and the blast wave that does the damage, it's the high-velocity shrapnel that comes flying with it, posing the real threat and making it such a dangerous weapon. Now, Hollywood loves to dramatize this part, but pulling the pin? That alone doesn't activate the grenade. All it does is remove the safety lock. The real moment of danger starts when the spoon, that curved metal lever, is released. Once that flips off, it frees a spring-loaded striker which slams into a percussion cap. That cap sparks, igniting a fuse inside. You've got about four to five seconds. Just enough time to throw it clear, hopefully far away. Then, boom, the fuse reaches the core, ignites the explosive, and sends metal fragments screaming in every direction. It's controlled chaos in the palm of your hand. But not all grenades are built to kill or inflict harm. While some are designed for maximum damage and destructive force, others serve very different purposes on the battlefield. Let's break down the different types and what they're really used for in a variety of tactical situations that demand precision and control. One, smoke grenades. These use the same delay fuse mechanism found in other grenades, ensuring a reliable and consistent deployment. But instead of explosives, they're packed with chemicals like hexachloroethane zinc. When ignited, they billow thick colored smoke used to mark locations for air support or advancing units, conceal troop movements from enemy observation, or signal aircraft in dynamic environments providing crucial coordination. Non-lethal, but the heat generated by the chemical reaction can cause burns if mishandled. So caution is paramount when deploying and handling these devices. 1. Stun Grenades, aka Flashbangs. These are built for creating chaos and disorientation without causing serious carnage or lasting physical injury. These explode with a blinding flash, millions of candelas, and a bang louder than a jet engine, delivering a sensory overload that can temporarily stun even the most seasoned operators. They're designed to disorient and temporarily incapacitate, not destroy or inflict lasting harm making them invaluable in situations where minimizing casualties is critical. Inside, a magnesium or aluminum-based compound that burns rapidly, creating a sensory overload through intense light and sound, all without a shrapnel burst, ensuring a focused effect. One, incendiary grenades. If you need intense heat and fire to achieve a specific objective, these are the flamethrowers of the grenade world, delivering devastating thermal energy. White phosphorus is the star here. It ignites spontaneously on contact with air, sticks aggressively to surfaces and burns at terrifying temperatures, making it incredibly difficult to extinguish. Used to destroy enemy supplies, disable equipment or breach fortifications, these grenades are definitely not to be taken lightly due to their destructive potential and inherent dangers. 1. Offensive Grenades Specifically made for close quarters combat scenarios where space is limited, these grenades focus on delivering a concussive blast rather than fragmentation. 
They typically use a smaller explosive charge and often feature plastic or thin metal shells to control the blast radius and minimize the risk of ricochet. Why? The goal is to stun and concuss enemies effectively without turning the room into a lethal death trap for everyone inside, including friendly forces operating in close proximity demanding careful consideration. Not all grenades are thrown by hand, as you might imagine. Modern militaries also deploy rifle grenades and grenade launchers, significantly extending the range and destructive power of traditional hand-thrown grenades, offering a tactical advantage. These specialized devices use the same fundamental triggering principles, fuses, ignition systems, and explosive cores, but are weapon-fired for added reach and pinpoint precision, enhancing their effectiveness. Some grenades are even designed with specialized anti-tank capabilities or advanced armor-piercing designs, making them incredibly versatile and potent on the modern battlefield. Grenades are absolutely not toys. They're considered among the most dangerous and potentially lethal tools in a soldier's arsenal. And their use is strictly regulated in nearly every country around the globe, with severe penalties for misuse. Military personnel must undergo intensive and rigorous training on safe handling procedures, precise timing, understanding the blast radius, and choosing proper cover in combat situations, ensuring minimal risk. A typical fragmentation grenade has a kill radius of approximately 5 meters and a casualty radius that can extend up to 15 meters. That means you can still be seriously injured, even when positioned behind what seems like partial cover. Every single second, every calculated step and every critical decision counts when these dangerous devices are in play on the battlefield. So next time you see a grenade in a movie or read about one in history, you'll know exactly what's happening under the surface and just how much thought goes into every click, pull and blast. Thanks for watching Origin Stories, where we uncover the powerful truths behind the world's simplest looking tools, if there's something you want us to break down next, drop it in the comments and who knows, you might see your idea featured in an upcoming episode. Don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on that notification bell. Until next time, stay curious.